Select the workspace, insert object, and select a folder. We'll name this folder Tools. Now inside the service script, service will want to insert a script, a service script, and we'll name it Tool Handler. Inside this Tool Handler script, we'll have a function named Untouch, and it'll have one parameter, which is List. This list parameter should be an array with elements that are tools. So for each element of that array, and the function will want to find the handle. Just to avoid errors though, let's first check if handle does exist. If it does exist, then we'll look for the anti-touch script within the handle. And I know you might be saying, whoa, Shiro, why is the variable name TI? We're not looking for touch interest. Well, I was just making sure that you were paying attention. Because you're right, that that's just confusing. That's the importance of setting variable names that are accurate and straightforward. So anyways, uh, if the anti-touch script does not exist, then we'll, make, we'll want to make a clone of it. And that's assuming that anti-touch is a child of this current script. And we'll make note of that so we don't forget. Now we'll set the parent of that clone to be the handle, and we'll make sure that that clone is not disabled, you know, so the script will run. Now we have a new variable, tools. Using the untouch function with that variable, we'll basically initialize all the tools within the folder. Now, if a child is added to that tools folder, then we'll want to make note of that. We'll want to untouch the child. And remember though, that the parameter within the function, it expects an array. So we'll just make it look like an array, but there's only one element. If a child is added to the workspace, we want to first check if the child is a tool. Afterwards, if it is, then we want to wait and set its parent to the tools folder and the weight is actually pretty important if you don't add a weight then the game will think that something's wrong anyways uh, inside the script inside the tool handler script that's where we'll put the anti-touch script and first we'll disable it so the script doesn't think it has to run now inside the anti-touch script we want to set an actual ti variable so we're trying to look for the touch interest within the parent of this script. If touch interest does exist, then we want to destroy it. That's just basic initialization. Afterwards, we're gonna guard this. We're gonna guard the handle, alright? So if a child is added to the parent, to the handle, then we want to check if the class name if the child is a touch transmitter, that's the class name of touch interest. Now, um, if it is, then you want to wait again, then you want to destroy it. Now let's give it a shot. Um, I'm inserting a tool into the tools folder and I'm clicking play. Yeah, okay, we didn't pick it up. That's a good thing. All right, now I'm gonna paste a tool into the workspace and it yeah it should have parented it to the tools folder so now select the starter GUI and insert a screen GUI which we will name key GUI and inside that we'll insert a text button here feel free to customize it as you see fit I will be changing the style the text to E or whatever key you're binding it to, the font and the text color, enabling text scaled, changing the size which I um, use scale values for so the the ratios are the same on every screen and device. Also, don't forget to change the name to E. Now select the starter GUI again and insert a local script. We'll name it Toolscript. 
inside this tool script, we'll set a few variables that we'll need first. We've got the user input service, the replicated storage, the tool event that will be located inside the replicated storage, and we should take note of that because we haven't quite added that yet. We also need the player, the player's key GUI, and the player's character. Now we're ready to set up the search function. For the search function, we'll need to get the tools in the tools folder. And we'll also set two variables. Min will represent the minimum magnitude between a tool and the humanoid root part. And tool, on the other hand, will store the tool that is closest to the player. Next, we will use a for loop to go through each and every one of the tools. And this is why we're putting things inside the tool folder in the first place. We don't want to search through every single object in the workspace just to check if it's a tool and if it's close enough to the character. Once again, we will make sure that the handle exists. So we have a conditional statement right there. And then if the handle exists, we'll calculate the magnitude and it's the distance between the humanoid root part and the handle of that tool. Now, if there is no current minimum magnitude, or if the current magnitude is even smaller than the minimum magnitude set, then we'll set the new value of the minimum magnitude as the current magnitude, and the tool will be the current tool. Now, just before the search function ends, we'll want to add this conditional statement. If the minimum does exist, and if the minimum is less than 5, meaning if the distance between the closest tool and the humanoid root part is less than 5 studs, then we want to return the tool. And in returning the tool, calling this function will give us the tool. Now we'll need a while loop, so for every 1 second, we're going to search for a tool. And if the tool does exist, then we want the E text button to be visible, otherwise we don't want it to be visible. Now just before that unending while loop, we want to add a input began event for the user input service. So if the user input type of the player is keyboard and game processed equals false, meaning that the player isn't currently typing inside a GUI or something, then we'll check if the input key code is equal to E. If so, we want to search for a tool. And if a tool is returned, meaning if the tool is close enough and it's there in the first place, then we want to fire the server and send a tool. We also want to set the key GUI E button visibility to false. Now we're on to the very last part of this video. Back in the tool handler script, we're going to create a remote event at the very top. So local re equals instance new remote event. We'll set the parent of that remote event to the replicated storage because that's where the other scripts expect to find it. And we'll rename it to tool event, which is how the other scripts, well, how the other script expects to have it named. Now let's create a remote event that should connect to the fire server function that we had earlier. And we've got two parameters, the player and the tool. Even though we did not ourselves um, return the player, the player will always be the very first parameter in on-server events. The second parameter is our first parameter that we sent over, and it was, remember, it was fire server tool, so that's where the tool is coming from. Now, just so, you know, it, this method can't be abused as much, we're going to calculate the magnitude within this server script. Again, this magnitude will be the distance between the handle, the tool's handle, and the humanoid root part. Now, just to make sure, if magnitude is less than 5, if the tool handle is less than 5 studs away from the character's humanoid root part, then we'll finally set the parent of that tool to the player's backpack. This method should then work in filtering enabled environments, and this should decrease the risk of exploitation. Now that we're all set with that, feel free to insert the rest of your tools into the tools folder. Remember, if you put your tools in the workspace from the very start and the script isn't able to detect that, then you'll still be able to pick up your tools by touching them. 
While testing this in a server, I can verify that this does work.